In this lesson, we are going to perform debugging in VS Code using the VS Code Remote Development Extension. Now, this Remote Development Extension Pack actually contains three other extension packs Remote SSH, Dev Containers, WSL. In this case, I am going to use Dev Containers with Docker Containers. Generally, what we do? We create one Docker image, there we run our application or we debug. Here, the editor itself would be opened inside the Docker container. Now, how to do that? Now, how to do that? Let me demonstrate with some examples. So, first thing I need to do is go to VS Code, click on extensions, type remote development. Now, this is the extension. It basically has three extension packs as you can see over here. One is dev container, another is WSL, another would be remote SSH. So, let me install this first. Now, it's getting installed. It is installed now. Now, as the extension is already installed, let me download a sample Spring Boot project. So, here inside github.com slash expert 2015 Spring Boot debug, this is the project. Now, what you need to do, you need to select a particular branch. This remote container dev, you just select this, go to code, click on download zip. As the project is downloaded, let me go to the download section, extract this one. I'm going to place this code in a particular directory from where I will open it with VS Code. This is the directory. I have placed the source code over here. Now, let's go to VS Code. But before opening the source code, let me go through the documentation a little bit. What it says, the remote development extension pack allows you to open any folder in a container on a remote machine or the Windows subsystem for Linux and take advantage of VS Code's full feature set. So, in this case, we would be opening the folder inside a container. Now, go to Explorer. Click on open folder or what you can do, you can go to file, select open folder and select the folder where your source code is present. Now I am inside the folder where I have the source code, select this directory, click on select folder. Now here is one important thing, you can see on the right hand side at the bottom, it says folder contains a dev container configuration file, reopen folder to develop in a container. I have not opened it and for learning purpose as I have all the container details inside this folder and inside this JSON file that's why VS Code was asking me. So we will explore that option but for the time being let me do one thing let me close all this and remove this directory. Later on I will use this but for the time being let me delete this one. Now go to view command palette. And here you can see the first option or you can type add development container configuration files. So VS Code is asking me whether I want to add the development container configuration files or not. In case it doesn't, we can type add development and this option will come. I will select this one as if I don't have any pre-configured development container JSON file. So select this one. Now it would ask me for the option that I want to choose, whether I want to use a Docker file based on that everything would be done or I want a predefined container configuration definition. I will choose docker file as I have one. Now based on the file that I have provided as you can see it's giving me a dev container.json. This VS code has generated and it is asking me to reopen in container. Click this one. On the right hand side at the bottom you can see starting dev container. I can check the log. Now this part is time consuming. So after a certain point of time, I'm going to pause the recording and resume. Now we can see different messages over here. The VS code is creating the necessary configuration and setting up everything. Now VS code is asking whether I should install the extension pack for Java extension or not. Let me click install. Now the extension pack for Java is getting installed. So the extension pack for Java is installed inside the container. So this particular view, if I go to file explorer, right, this is what is opened in the container itself. If I open the terminal now, if I go to new terminal and if you check the command prompt, it is different. It is basically opening inside the container that got created. Even if I go to my Docker desktop, you can see this particular container, right? This is created and this is in running state. There are certain 
images are also created based on that this containers are instantiated anyways let me go back to vs code so right now i am in the docker container itself let me close all these pop-ups if i open the project it's a simple spring boot based application i have this hello world application dot java file and i have a sample controller this is what we have used in earlier lessons also here i have two simple methods based on the mapping one is for slash the default url another is slash hello okay so let me run this application first Now the application is starting up. It's showing me a message. Your application running on port 8080 is available. See all forwarded ports. So what we can do here on the right hand side, just beside the terminal, you can see ports. Now there are two ports shown, 8080 and 35433. Now these are the ports which are automatically forwarded by VS Code itself. And the application is running we can see from the terminal now if i want to access them via browser if i go here you can see this particular url is shown if i click this it would be trying to open the application in a browser and you can see the response is coming right hello world spring boot i can even invoke the other method press enter yes it's working now what i want to do i want to debug this from the container itself so let me stop this and I'm going to place a breakpoint over here, say in this method, maybe at line number 18 and run the same application in debug mode. Okay, I have made a mistake from here, this hello world container, I'm trying to run it. Rather, I should open this one, this application file and now run it in debug mode because it has the main method, the other one, the controller does not have it. Again, the Spring Boot application is starting up. Let's wait for a while for the startup to complete. Now again, it is giving me an option to see the all the forwarded ports, which is nothing. Basically, this particular port section, same thing I can do like I did earlier. I can click this particular globe like icon to open in browser. You can see it is coming. Let me try with the old URL, which we used. Now press enter. Now it's waiting. You can see the icon of VS Code is blinking. If I go here, the breakpoint is hit and we can see this input parameter value. It is test remote container debug, which we passed. So now we are able to debug the code from the container itself. The editor is opened inside the container. So earlier, what we used to do, we used to develop somewhere and we, I have a Docker container. There I'm pushing the images, running the container, and I am debugging. Now the editor itself is inside the container. So this is one way of running the application inside the Docker container using this remote development extension. Now we are inside the container and I want to go back, right? So what I can do, one option is at the bottom, you can see this dev container, right? Once we are inside the container, this icon shows us where are we? Now I can click this and I can have different options. I can rebuild the container, I can show the container log and many other. Now I want to go back to my host system. I am inside the container. I want to reopen the folder locally. Let me reopen it. Now VS Code is going back to the old mode. The old view we have got, right? And here at the bottom, it shows that we have a configuration file. Reopen the folder to develop in a container. The same message we saw earlier, whether we want to move to the dev container or not so whatever we have done is by creating the dev container dot json from the scratch right so instead of that we can do another thing let me delete everything close the folder go to this directory delete the content now download the project once again cut it paste it Extract again, go back to VS Code, click on File, Open Folder, select the Project Folder, click Select Folder. Now, earlier we removed the .dev container folder, right? This time, I am going to use the one which is already there in the GitHub, which I myself created. 
Now, if you see over here, this is the sample content which I have made. Here, whatever VS Code was generating, it is same. Only modification that I did is I have added this static mapping. Here, what will happen? The port 8080 from the container would be exposed as 8081. Now, what we can do? We can go to View, Command Palette and this option we can choose. Now, we don't need to add development container configuration files because I have the configuration file which is the div container.json. What we need to do? We need to open the remote container, right? So, if I type reopen, I have this reopen in container. Let's select that. So, it says configuration files change that is div container.json. So, let's rebuild this. Definitely, because we added that port mapping and VS Code has identified that. Ideally, we should be rebuilding in that way the project would work. If I go back to the Docker desktop, if I go to the container, it was okay. Now the change has already started. You can see the port mapping is 8081, 8080. If we have noticed, it is just 13 seconds ago, right? Earlier, it would definitely have been 8080 against 8080 itself. Anyways, let's go back to VS Code. Now, one disadvantage here is we have rebuilt the container so the extension pack is gone anyways let me reinstall this inside the container there are ways to bypass this we need to mount certain volumes in order to avoid all this but in this lesson we are not focusing that we are just seeing how to use this remote development container and do the development directly inside the docker container itself by the time the extension pack gets installed there is one important part i want to highlight here in this particular project the docker file that I have created that is also very important if I open this you can see over here it's a very simple docker file where we are using specifically the images VS code suggests us to use it is an exciting feature I understand but it's still it's still going through random changes here typically I am using the images shared from the VS code website which are intended for use with remote container extension so that is what very important part anyways let me go back the extension pack for java is already installed let me close all this projects are imported into workspace that is also fine go here now i'm going to run this particular code in debug mode so select this click on debug java i need to place a breakpoint so selecting this hello world okay breakpoint is already placed now this would be accessible in the 8081 port not the port which we used earlier right it has to change to 8081 because the static mapping we did anyways if i go here to port section you can see this is the port but the local address is 8081 so i go back to the browser change this one press enter now it's waiting the icon is blinking here and the breakpoint is hit. If I continue this, let's go back to the browser. The output has come. So, in this way, we can debug any Java based application or in this case, we have done a debugging of a sample Spring Boot application inside the Docker container using the VS Code dev container extension. Let me go back to the file structure. So, here, as I mentioned, it's a very simple docker file and here we are using the images shared from vs code itself basically in docker hub under this particular link microsoft vs code dev containers these are the images that are listed over there and these images are intended for use with vs code remote containers and accordingly one of those images i'm using here so if you are using docker file you have to be bit careful about the image that you are using otherwise you can have a different kind of problem so that's for all we will learn many more interesting topics in the upcoming lessons